Hello everyone. So tomorrow morning I am flying out for Motorama to compete in another robot competition with crippling depression in the 30 pound weight class. Before I get everything boxed up and bolted together, I wanted to do a very short video to show some of the things I've been working on for the past uh, month or two. I've actually completely rebuilt crippling depression from the ground up as I kind of alluded to in my previous videos. I remachined an entire new chassis, so I now have two full chassis. I redid all that, um, redid the top and bottom armor plates, new titanium there, and then just kind of retweaked some things inside. So I wanted to kind of give you just a quick rundown of some of the changes I made before I get this all bolted up and shipped out to Harrisburg for Motorama. So here is a lovely top-down shot of what crippling depression looks like right now. Pretty much everything is ready to go. I've got everything wired up. Um, I guess the first thing I'll talk about is the electronic system. I did make a little couple changes with the electronics. Um, I ended up keeping the fans, although I have a few set of these. If these end up breaking, I'm just going to abandon the fans altogether, and most likely they will break, but, you know, they're here to keep the ESCs cool. Here is a new addition. This is a BEC. This is a Capel, ah, Castle Creations Battery Eliminator Circuit, BEC. And before, I was running off the BECs on my drive, ESCs, lots of acronyms here, and that was what was powering my radio. For now, I am actually using the Castle Creations BEC um, because that's a little bit more reliable. I didn't have any issues with it, but that is kind of common knowledge that you're not really supposed to run off of your ESCs because if you have an issue with that or, you know, let's say um, one of these bound up, then the ESC could fail on that and then you wouldn't be getting any power to the radio. So this is just kind of a nice little security backup and um, I kind of custom wired this and reheat shrunk it in there. So that's really the only change in the electrical system. Uh, if we move on over to the actual chassis, you can see it looks very, very similar to the previous one, and it is very close. The notable difference is you see I've got the slots cut out in the front and the back. Before, I had a lot of issue with the sheer strength of the screws holding all of the forces. Now that I have these little notches cut out, these new frame rails were made wider or longer, and so they now notch into the front and the back, so all the forces that get applied to the chassis will actually go into these notches and not be relied on the screws themselves that go through the chassis because the shear strength would, well, was an issue on the last one. So that is kind of the big change and the main reason for redesigning the chassis. Another couple little changes. Um, here are the end pieces that actually go, you know, one goes here and then I have another one that goes over here on this side. This is an old one and here is a new one. And you'll notice that they're very similar. The main difference lies over here. On these, they had um, two screws holes on each side and that would go into two into the front and the back plate on the chassis. I've done away with that and the new ones have one screw hole in the middle, and then here I have two dowel pins. So let me spin this around and show you the edge of the um, chassis to give you a better idea what that looks like. So here is what the edge of the chassis looks like, and you can see I have dowel pins here, 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 and here. So these actually key into these outside plates, and so the outside plates go in like that and they kind of get pounded in place. They actually, this whole chassis can be held together just by those dowel pins. And so that should help out with the issue that I had last time where it was a really big hit coming in like this would put all the shear strength on the screw and then everything would kind of get out of alignment. And these screws that run the full length all the way through the drive block and into this frame rail, uh, these guys, are really important. And when I start to kind of um, shift and shear these around, a lot of bad things happen. So I wanna make sure that these side plates stay as solid as possible and these um, dowel pins should help that. Another change I made to the um, actual chassis is these little um, rails right here, these were meant to hold on the top of the armor. So the armor sits on top of here, and this was just a couple attachment points. This is a relatively thin, I think this is only 1 8 inch thick aluminum, and because every single time I need to change out or charge the battery, I need to undo the whole top plate, move it off, and put it back. I was screwing and unscrewing these multiple times, and these all unthreaded, and that was a problem. So 
what I did is I got rid of those and I moved over to these um, little UHMW blocks. So these actually sit on the new ones like that. And these actually have brass threaded inserts that I can easily remove if these end up stripping out. So these little things sit kind of like that and like that, and they're bolted into the side of the end plates like that. And so this will give me a little bit better place to mount the armor. And also these are a little bit, you know, more shock absorbing than the aluminum. So um, yeah, that's just one little minor change. And that was more of just kind of an annoyance that during the competition, I was always stripping these screws out because I was going in and out constantly. And you know, this really thin aluminum is just prone to stripping. So that was another little change. If you watched my previous video on the damage recap of this whole thing, pretty much all the damage came from the weapon loosening itself and then kind of, you know, wobbling a little bit, grinding against the weapon plate, grinding against the bottom of the chassis, things like that. So for this iteration, I've made one big change, which is right up here. Let me zoom in a little bit and give you a better um, view of what this is. Okay, so here we're looking at the top down of the weapon block, and you can see that there's this um, big part right here. I've got all this tightened down, so I don't really want to take it off, but this is a solid piece of grade five titanium that I machined, and it is fully threaded through this um, screw. This is a um, 3 8 inch um, bolt that goes the whole length all the way down to the bottom of the weapon. And so this little um, hat, if you will, actually holds everything in place. And then this nut on the top is just there to tighten against it to hold it from slipping. So all of the force of the weapon in the vertical direction like that, all of that force is being held in by this part. And this is a half inch thick overall plate of titanium. So this should hold it versus those little washers that constantly kept cupping. So this is going to be the solution for that. Here we've got the underside of Crippling Depression version 2. And um, the other thing you'll notice is that everything is spray painted matte black. Um, I decided to forego the Linex coating, mostly just as a test. You know, you can't really do a conclusive test unless you have a control. So here is just spray paint, which should offer no protection. So I will see how that works. Also, you might notice the um, new weapon disc. This has twice the um, tooth depth as the last one. It actually weighs the same and still has the same profile overall, but it has twice the tooth depth. And I do have a third weapon. I have the original, I've got this one, and then I have a third one that has even double this, has a really big tooth. So um, I've got three teeth to choose from, which is kind of neat. Um, the other thing to note down here is on the last armor, I had the issue with um, the blade actually coming into contact with the edge of the armor and ripping it out and bending it and bowing it over here. And so what I've done on this is I've actually installed a couple screw holes here and then there's one here and there that you can't see underneath the weapon. And these are actually tapped directly into the weapon block versus the frame rails, which you can see run along this plane. And the issue was is that when it was tapped directly into the frame, if the screw broke off, the screw was just stuck inside the frame. It was a real pain to get out. With this situation, I've got it tapped directly into the block, and there's actually threaded inserts that go inside the block. So if these shear off or break off, I can actually just remove the insert, put a new insert in, and I'm good to go. So that is just a little bit more robust. But other than that, not a whole lot has changed on the bottom. And I think the last and final improvement is just purely a cosmetic one, um, but the top armor plate now has a laser etched um, logo. This is my um, team logo, DSM Robotics, and is a phrenology bust, if anyone is familiar with that. So now I have that in there. Crippling Depression does have a tiny bit of decoration, um, but I am still sticking with the all black depressing theme, um, but that is a little bit of decoration that's on there. So yeah, other than that, that is um, the changes that I made for version two, and we'll see how it does in the competition. I have crippling depression.